Two weeks ago we did a poll and asked you what of four elements you would like us to discuss. And you chose silver. Now it's likely one of the most beautiful elements in the periodic table, so let's dive into the details. Welcome to Cube Chemistry, where we will discuss all the elements of the periodic system and also do experiments. And if you like this video and want to see more, make sure to subscribe. Also, if you want to influence next week's experiment, make sure to fill in the poll. So. And the cube of this week is something shiny and silvery and that is no coincidence because this is the element silver. Now it has a great history and it is also an element that we can say a lot about. Like always, if you want a cube like this or another cube as a gift, make sure to click on the link in the description and use the promo code. You will get a 10% discount and also will be helping out this channel. Silver alloy dates back to ancient times, with evidence of its use found in cultures across the globe. As early as 4000 BC, silver artifacts adorned the tombs of Egyptian pharaohs, signifying wealth and status. In Mesopotamia, silver was used for ornaments, utensils, highlighting its value in daily life. By 3000 BC, silver mining has become a significant industry in Anatolia, modern-day Turkey. The Chaldeans and the Babylonians utilized silver for trade, establishing it as a standard of wealth and a medium of exchange. The famous Code of Hammurabi even referenced silver in legal transactions, underscoring its economic importance. In Greece and Rome, silver took on new dimensions. The Greeks mined silver extensively from the Laurian mines, funding the rise of Athens as a naval power. The Romans continued this legacy with silver coinage like the denarius becoming a staple of the economy. Silver's role in currency solidified its status as a backbone of ancient economies. The discovery of the New World in the late 15th century ushered an era of unprecedented silver production. The Potosi mines in present-day Bolivia became one of the richest silver deposits ever to be found. Spanish exploitation of these mines led to massive influx of silver into Europe, fueling economic growth but also causing the inflation known as the Price Revolution. In China, silver became the standard currency during the Ming Dynasty. The demand for silver, driven by the need to pay taxes in silver, led to extensive trade networks linking the Americas, Europe and Asia. This global flow of silver marked one of the earliest forms of international trade. The ancients considered silver to be a fundamental material. Greek philosophers like Aristotle and Roman naturalists such as Pliny the Elder described silver's properties and methods of extraction. However, they did not understand it as a chemical element in the modern sense. In medieval Europe and the Islamic Golden Age, alchemists studied silver extensively, associating it with the moon due to its shiny reflective appearance. They referred to it as one of the seven noble metals and symbolized it with the crescent moon. Although alchemists attempted to transform other metals into silver, they did not identify its elemental nature. Silver's recognition as an element occurred during the development of modern chemistry in the 17th and 18th centuries. By then, scientists like Robert Boyle and Anthony Lavoisier were laying the groundwork for chemical understanding of elements and compounds. Lavoisier, often called the father of modern chemistry, included silver in his list of chemical elements in the late 18th century. He defined elements as fundamental substances that could not be broken down further by chemical means, and silver was recognized as one of these. In 1814, Jens Jakob Berzelius, a Swedish chemist, introduced a system of chemical symbols and assigned silver its symbol AG, derived from the Latin word argentum. Now, during the 19th century, advancements in spectroscopy and atomic theory provided further understanding of silver's atomic structure and chemical behavior. It was classified as a transition metal, solidifying its place on the periodic table. Now, this story tells us that silver was not really discovered in the same way that elements like uranium or radium were discovered. Instead, its early use as a valuable and versatile material evolved into its formal recognition as a chemical element with the rise of modern science. The word silver originates from the Old English word seelfor, which is similar to the German word silver and the Dutch word silver. These terms are thought to derive from a common Proto-Germanic root. 
Silver's chemical symbol, AG, comes from the Latin word argentum, which means shiny or white. This Latin term traces back to the Proto-Indo-European root, and I'm not going to pronounce this, meaning white or to shine. This root is also the source of the term Argentina, the South American country named for its rich silver deposits explored by the early Spanish settlers. Now, silver is a soft, white, lustrous metal with the highest reflectivity of any element, making it invaluable for mirrors and optical devices. Silver melts at 961 degrees Celsius and boils at 2162 degrees Celsius, indicating strong metallic bonding. It is also highly malleable and ductile, second only to gold and palladium, allowing it to be formed into thin sheets and fine wires. Now, silver boasts the highest electrical conductivity and thermal conductivity of all metals, making it essential in electronics. Now, silver is relatively unreactive compared to other metals. It does not react with oxygen or water at normal temperatures, so it doesn't rust or tarnish easily. Now, many of you have probably seen that silver tarnishes sometimes into more blackish appearance. Now, this happens when uh, silver is exposed to silver compounds in the air, forming silver sulfide, which appears as that black layer. Now, silver occurs in its pure metallic form known as native silver, often found intertwined with quartz, gold and other metals. I have some examples here from my own mineral collection. It is also found in minerals like below. And major silver reserves are located in countries like Mexico, Peru, China, Australia and Russia. Silver is extracted both as a primary product and as a byproduct of mining other metals like copper, gold, lead and zinc. And as an example, uh, this specific mineral that I have here contains gold, lead and zinc and also silver. Now, after the extraction, pyrometallurgical processes are used and they involve melting the ore to produce a metal rich lead or copper, which is then refined. Now, another process that is being used is the hydrometallurgical process. Now, you use an aqueous chemistry for extraction here, such as the cyanide process for silver and gold extraction. Now, another technique that can be used is electro-refining, an electrochemical process that purifies silver by making it the anode in an electrolytic cell. The problem with all this is that silver mining can lead to habitat destruction, soil erosion and contamination of water sources with heavy metals and chemicals. Now, environmental regulations aim to reduce these negative impacts through sustainable mining practices and rehabilitation of mined areas. So, what do we use it for? Well, conductors and contacts. We use it in switches, relays, contacts due to low contact resistance. We use it in print circuit boards. Silver, inks and solders are used in PCBs for reliable electronic connections. We also use it in batteries. Silver oxide batteries offer high energy to weight ratios used in small devices like watches or calculators. Now, we also use it in solar energy for photovoltaic cells. Silver paste is used in solar panels to conduct electrons out of the solar cells. Now, silver was also used in traditional photography. Silver halides, such as silver bromide and silver iodide, are light-sensitive compounds, essential in film and photography. Now these halides are used in the developing process. Exposed silver halides are reduced to metallic silver to create images. X-ray imaging still uses silver-based films in medical imaging due to their high resolution. Now because of its antimicrobial properties, we also use silver in medicine. For instance, in wound dressings, silver impregnated dressings prevent infections in burns and chronic wounds. In medical devices, coatings on catheters and implants, they reduce microbial colonization. Now it's also used for nanotechnology, silver nanoparticles used in coatings, textiles and plastics to provide antimicrobial surfaces. We use it for dental alloys, amalgams of containing silver are used in dental fillings. Now one of the most known applications of silver is of course jewelry and silverware. You see this for instance in sterling silver. The composition is 92.5% silver and 7.5% other metals, usually copper for strength. 
Now, uses are rings, necklaces, bracelet, utensils and decorative items. Now, silver requires maintenance. Now, to prevent tarnishing, rhodium plating or protective lacquers can be applied. Now, in the past, silver was used for coinage and standard currencies, such as silver coins, and they were the standard in many economies, valued for their intrinsic worth. Now, silver these days is more of an investment. Silver bullion coins and bars are purchased as investment and hedges against inflation. These days, we also have the collectibles. Commemorative and limited edition coins are sought after by collectors. Now, silver provides a superior reflectivity for high quality mirrors. For optical instruments, it's used in telescopes, microscopes and spectrometers for precise light reflection. Now, in infrared telescopes, silver coatings are preferred due to their low emissivity in infrared wavelengths. Now, silver is also used as a catalyst in chemical production. For instance, when you do formaldehyde synthesis, silver catalysts facilitate the oxidation of methanol to formaldehyde. Silver is also used in ethylene oxide production, which is used to making antifreeze, plastics and detergents. In emission control, silver-based catalysts help to reduce harmful emissions from industrial processes. Now, silver is also used in clothing and textiles. Sportswear with silver-infused fabrics reduce odor-causing bacteria. In medical textiles, used in hospital linens and gowns, we use it to minimize infection risks. And in smart textiles, silver threads enable electrical conductivity in wearable technology. Now, in our episode about iodine, we also discussed cloud seeding. Now, to perform cloud seeding, silver is used in combination with iodine. And if you want to know more, watch this episode. So, it's evident that this shiny metal is far more than just a precious metal. From its ancient roots and profound historical impact to its critical role in modern technology and medicine, silver continues to be a cornerstone of human advancement. Its unique properties do not only captivate our imagination, but also drive innovation across various industries. Now, silver's story is one of enduring value and adaptability. Whether it's enabling the latest electronic devices, improving medical treatments, or simply adding beauty to our lives through art and jewelry, silver remains an element of endless possibilities. And as we look into the future, silver will undoubtedly continue to shine brightly, illuminating new paths in science, technology, and culture. And that concludes this episode. If you think I missed anything, leave it in the comments. And if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe.